Okay, the next part of discussion is DFT and DTFT. So, for the uh, continuous transform, for continuous time signals, we are using the Laplace transform and the Fourier transform. Okay, and for the discrete, for the discrete time signal, we use the Z transform. And DTFT and the DFT. So <coughs> there are three types of transform for the discrete transform that is the Z transform, DTFT, and the DFT. So Z transform is just XZ is the function of Z, right? And where Z is equal to e power of J omega, that will turn to the DTFT. When we put z is equal to e omega, then it becomes a DTFT. So we can say that in both the cases, in both the cases, because we are talking about the discrete time signal. So in both the cases, our signal, time domain signal, xn is in the discrete form. Discrete form. But our xz or x power of j omega will be in the form of Continuous, continuous frequency domain, right? So, <coughs> what is going on the uh, uh, jet transform and the DTFT? That is, time domain is in the discrete form, but frequency domain in the continuous form. But for the discrete system, we should have time domain and frequency domain both in the discrete form, right? Just like the continuous transform, both the time domain and frequency domain in the continuous form. But in the uh, discrete J transform and DTFT, time domain is in the <coughs> discrete form, but frequency domain is in the continuous continuous domain. Okay. Now, so one more transform is required, that is DFT, discrete Fourier transform. In this a discrete Fourier transform, both the time and the frequency, both domains are in the discrete form, that is xn and xk. Here, your time domain is represented by xn and the frequency domain is represented by xk. So, it is just like 1, 0, 2 something discrete form and it will be like that 2, 0, 1, 3, 1. Okay. So, for the DFT, both the time domain and the frequency domain will be in the discrete form. Okay, so uh, as the J transform is already com uh, completed, now our next topic is DTFT, that is discrete time Fourier transform, and this uh, DTFT can be obtained by just putting e power of j omega in the place of z, right? So Z is a continuous form, that is XZ, or XZ is just a continuous form of the fun function of the Z. Similarly, when we put Z is equal to E power of J omega, then it becomes a DTFT and it will also be the continuous function of the omega. Okay, so our next part is DTFT, discrete time Fourier transform. Time Fourier transform. Its definition is xn xn discrete time domain function then its Z transform xz is defined as summation of n is equal to minus infinite to infinite xn e power of minus zn e power of minus of z to the power minus of n okay that was your z transform when we put z is equal to e power of j omega then it will become dt of t x e power of j omega 
that will be the dt of t dt of t of xn will be dt of x uh, dt of t dt of dt of t of xn is given by x e power of j omega that will be given by n is equals to minus of infinity to infinity xn will remain same and that will be replaced by the e power of minus of j omega because just put z is equals to e for power of omega then your uh, z transform will be converted to discrete time Fourier transform ok so this is the d of t or just dt of t of xn is equals to x e power of j omega and that will be given by n is equals to minus infinite to infinite xn e power of minus j omega of n and its in the inverse discrete time Fourier transform of x e power of j omega will be given by so this is the dt of t that means we are converting from time domain to frequency domain and now this is the in inverse discrete time Fourier transform that is we are converting from frequency domain to time domain ok so in this case it become 1 upon 2 pi and that is equals to because we are finding the inverse transform of this one so it is xn is equals to 1 upon 2 pi minus pi 2 pi and because uh, we have to integrate this particular part so x e power of j omega e power of minus j omega n and that will be plus j omega n and integrated by d omega ok so this is the basic formula of d t of t and this is the inverse in, in inverse discrete time Fourier transform now one main thing is there you can use all the properties of the z transform for this one that is the shifting property, scaling property and so on ok so for, uh, for solving the question it is only required to know the question and uh, know the formula of the question or and all the dt of t just uh, if you are knowing the z transform then you can find all the dt of t of the function just replacing j, z is equals to e power of j omega and you can find out the inverse, jet, uh, inverse uh, dt of t by using this this formula x n is equals to this much ok so uh, this one is the new concept here because you have we have already discussed this formula in the this formula and this formula in the j uh, transform part so this one is the new part we will discuss separately the questions of uh, dt of t and the id, ID, ID t of t in the separate videos